This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to be talking Louis Vuitton. Men, Fall Winter 2022 collection, the last by Virgil Abloh, may he rest in peace. So I've just watched the show and we're going to review it together. Uh, subscribe to my channel here on the tubes, push the join button next to the subscription button, become a member today, get access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco Balls spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to all my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday. You're all welcome to join my live streams and partake in the chat. So I have my wonderful co-chatters with me here on the sidebar, ready to review together the video from the Louis Vuitton Fall Winter Men 2022 collection, last ever collection by Virgil Abloh. This video is taken from the Louis Vuitton YouTube channel. Um, I did not, so it, it falls under fair use because we will be reviewing it. However, I changed the music. I will not be playing the original music from the show because that falls under copyright. I will be adding a copyright free music on top. And I have edited it down because the video is a bit too long. There's like this whole dance introductory moment that, you know, it's a bit too long. And then the outro is also a little bit long. So we're just going to condense it to the actual fashion that's in the show. Uh, and let, let, let's get straight to it. Let's see. Louis Vuitton, uh, fall, winter 22, Paris. Uh, the show was just showcased a couple of days ago in Gay Paris. Um, okay. So first they start with these, this dance. I, I edited this shorter. It was like much longer. I mean, we've seen this a thousand times, you guys. It's like, it's like Miranda would say again, you know, the Devil Wears Prada. Oh, these little like dance elements, groundbreaking. We've seen this dance company or thousand ton of people do it. It's nothing original with this like bouncing off of stuff coming out the stairs. Really kind of cringe. All right. So they're wearing black. I guess black is to also pay respect to Virgil. Oh my God. Sorry for the model. That was a mole. I thought that was a tear. I thought they painted a tear like he's crying for Virgil, but I think that was a mole. Yeah. My bad. Uh, so. And there you go. The original music is they're actually playing it in the room. Obviously, we're not playing that music. And these chairs are super uncomfortable. Could you imagine? So. So we got the black and white uh, color. Color starting to trickle in. Um. You know, it's a little bit like Balmain with the shoulders or Dior Homme meets uh, Louis Vuitton. The jacket is kind of interesting. It could be also Margiela. The bug looking mask. I mean, you know, it's editorial piece. Probably, maybe made to order. The oversized hat. It's been done a billion times before. So nothing special there. Classic black coat at the end of the day. You know what I mean? The shoes with the heels. Why not? But again, we've seen shoes with heels for men and women many times before. Um, Maria Pioski made some wonderful high heels. You know, the Maria Pioski, the designer that made uh, Bjork's swan dress for the Oscars, also made a wonderful collection with a study on high heels and history of fashion for men many years ago. So, you know, nothing new with high heels in general. Uh, a lot of colors, black and white a lot of colors black and white now all over purple okay i gotta be louder all right all over purple graffiti look okay now the dancers start coming in uh, these freaky hats you know to me maybe like really young musicians and famous people want to wear this stuff to me it just isn't fresh it, it just feels too costumey too much overdressed not giving me the right amount of flamboyant nor does it give me the right amount of self-conscious luxury it just gives me victim to fashion vibes and listen it's always a telltale sign when the models wearing the clothes don't manage to outwear the clothes when the models look like they when when it looks like the clothes are wearing the models then you know then the clothes will be wearing you too. 
because if a model can't pull it off, neither can you, trust you me, because you're going to need a hell of a lot of character to make this look somewhat not like a costume. And this is an issue that I've had with uh, Virgil Abloh in general at, at Louis. Um, very boxy designs that um, don't deliver. And it's so interesting that we're having all these dance elements to show like, oh, the clothes have freedom of movement. But that movement is not a natural movement. People are, they're moving very robotically, you know, in many in these, it's almost like a Pina Bausch. Look her up if you don't know who she is, a wonderful uh, choreographer, who uh, also a dancer who unfortunately passed away some time ago. But this kind of psychological setup of showing a collection within an intimate environment, like the bedroom, the rooftop of a house. It's like we are in the house and outside of the house and this house is falling apart. And then you have these dancers interacting with these intimate spheres. I mean, these little special effects like the chair folding the up and down, you know what I mean, girl. This is Louis Vuitton, okay? This is not some cheap magic trick that you see executed on, on the streets of, of gay Paris. So, but it's cringe, you know? It's like literally, it feels like for the first time ever, a brand got a budget and they're kind of learning the process of depicting fashion shows in a more experimental way, but they're kind of using all the cliches that we already know. So I'm like, well, why are you doing it then? If you're not contributing anything new to the game, just don't do it. Just don't do it. Just play with what you know and do it well. But this like laying on the ground, <laughs> this whole psychotic uh, movement and this whole psychology behind it. Very Pina Bausch, by the way. But then again, if you can't top Pina Bausch, don't try to do it. Uh, Jesus says, oh no, he fell. Is he okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you, J Jesus always cares. Uh, one of the, you know, chats, uh, the comments in the chats. Um, the boxy look is popular in Asia, says Phoenix Rising. Oh, yes, a lot of these. It's a good point, Phoenix. And I got to say, a lot of these fas luxury fashion brands, because we know Asia, that's where most of the money is coming uh, from for luxury brands. So the luxury brands are dictated by the market. And since the most of the market is in Asia mostly in China, they cater to those cultures and those lands. So hence, somebody with uh, more of a Caucasian Occidental aesthetic would see this and would think, oh, it's too stiff. It, it, there's no fluidity there. You know, I'm the type of person, I mean, look, I'm wearing a Christian Lacroix shirt from the 90s, a vintage Lacroix shirt, and it's very baroque, organic. It, it, I'm not saying, wow, great, but what I love is when things have a flow to them, an effect to them, when particular high-end fashion, luxury fashion, delivers a visceral feeling of it. You know, that's why I love John Galliano as well. Now, this is the opposite of that. This is absence of emotion. This is absence of affect, even though they're trying to contrast all of that through these dance movements. The dancers are supposed to be the round, organic, baroque moment of this show. But they are given these super unhuman movements, as if they're zombies slash androids. So again, their movements, as much as they're human movements, they have dehumanized them. They have turned their movements into these kind of android type of vibes where humanity is gone and people have like, look, they're like puppets that have absolutely no will anymore. And that is the fascinating juxtaposition, which is not really juxtaposition because it mirrors, actually, uh, the whole vibe of, of, of the clothing. The clothing is also quite dehumanizing and dehumanized, in my humble opinion. Call me Kreskin, but uh, this is not the clothes that I would want to wear if I want to express any sort of human warmth. If I wanted to be approachable by other humans, if I wanted other humans to, you know, approach me and just be friendly and open and start a conversation with me, this is not the clothes that I would be wearing. And isn't it interesting that, you know, in this time of humanity and social structures, you know, the lockdown situation, you would think we are missing the human touch. We're, we're, we're looking forward to the end of the lockdown. We want to be amongst other human beings again. Well, as a you know, as a designer, my approach would be to create a collection that is warm, friendly, that invites others in, rather than creating a collection that that does the opposite, 
This does not invite you in. This is super aggressive. Super aggressive. Um, and it says very much, leave me alone. I want to be rich in my own bubble. I am so self-absorbed and self-consumed that I just, I can't be bothered. I'm too fabulous to even acknowledge your presence and existence. This is what these outfits give me. This is the vibe it gives me. So it is a not, not a very cohesive collection. The presentation of it doesn't work. I mean, you know, again, we have these musicians playing music and it's supposed to be an emotional touch, but they're sit seated down on, in, on a aseptic, lifeless table that looks uncomfortable to sit on. Those chairs look uncomfortable to sit on. It's like these humans are trying to do something human, but the environment is so not friendly. It's so not dreamy. It's, it's rough. It's stiff. And these visions, even though they appear to be maybe dreamy, you know, oh, look at that, you know, a model with wings and a cherub haircut. But it doesn't look comfortable. It looks painful to wear those things. It looks like those wings could cut could cut you. I want to say cut a B. I'm not going to use the B word here, right? And um, it's... You see what I mean? And now he's dancing on the table where the people are playing those instruments. Now they're scared. He's going to slip and fall onto them, making it even less comfortable for them. I just... It, I, the whole time I'm, I'm watching this, I'm thinking... Oh, and then the camera is moving like that and the camera is making us feel disoriented as well so we're not feeling comfortable we're getting motion sick just looking at it the models don't know where they're going anymore there's one laying dead on the table while the musicians are playing we got this i guess they wanted to make it look like some angel maybe you know also to kind of say goodbye to virgil The wedding dress for the guy <laughs> i'm all for a guy wearing a wedding dress don't get me wrong but like the phoenix says i'm confused by the bridal veils well it's a dude getting married to you know, himself i guess um beekeeper chic says coco kitty cc it's way too many symbols and not set in a clear way. You know, it's like the dancing part is one thing. The sinking house in the floor is, is an artistic other thing. The, this kind of cherub crying and feeling his oats is a totally other thing. People at the table playing music and uncomfortable chairs is a whole other storyline. Uh, the dancers breaking their way through the models walking is another storyline. The models walking, like they, they don't acknowledge the presence nor the existence of any other human being in the room, is another storyline. And then within the clothing, some of the clothes are more streetwear chic, casual, whatever. But then other pieces like this one are completely the opposite. And that's another storyline. So they're, and, and then the dancers, how are they dancing? Well, they're dancing that type of Pina Bausch, emotional, visceral, like, you know, all that stuff. And it's like, that's a whole other thing. And then the camera movements. Sometimes the camera is perfectly like here, framed straight. And sometimes the camera is framed to the side. And sometimes the camera is moving the whole time. So those are three different storylines there as well. So they keep adding layers and layers and layers, so many of them. And probably you're gonna have some people working there thinking, yes, we did something great here. But to me, it just seems non-cohesive. It seems like a total mess. And just because you had a big budget, you know, a lot of things were made with huge budgets and they still were terrible. So money is no guarantee for quality and cohesion. And if there's anything we need after a lockdown situation, okay, then now they're gonna play music for another 10 minutes, super boring, I'm gonna end it here. Uh, oh no, it's still going on. All right, well, let's, I guess, let's see the clothes. Uh, while I keep blabbering, um, it, it, it's, if there's anything that we need after all of these years of lockdown, if the lockdown were to end, and I'm saying lockdown for lack of a better word because we are on YouTube, um, if there's anything we need more than ever, and that is cohesion. That is some sort of freaking stability in our lives because God knows we've lost the stability, we've lost the certainty, we've lost the security. So we need something more stable. We don't need this. This is like... You know that meme of John Travolta in um, Pulp Fiction? 
Like, that's literally what this is giving me, ex minus the John Travolta emotions. Because John Travolta at least had the... Okay, now envision John Travolta without this, but just still turning around, you would get this. Like, look, why even look around if you have no emotions? Then just shut yourself down and stop existing. That's basically what it is. So this is the, all the ateliers and the people and the workers, I guess, uh, walking out. Paying uh, homage to Virgil, I guess. This is the whole team that worked on everything. You know, all those people that are never acknowledged when the artistic director exits. But since now they don't have one, for once in their lifetime they're acknowledging the team. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice if you kept doing that every season. Acknowledge all your people. Yeah, Zombie Apocalypse is Brockstar. Alright, so they're all applauding each other, because that's, that's what you do. You know, self-celebratory. You know, everybody patting each other on the shoulder, saying, you did great, you did great, we're the best. We're the best, we're untouchable, we're unbreakable, we're the best. We need to be celebrated. We celebrate each other and we need to be celebrated by others. Um, oh God. Yeah, it's just, you know, fashion. I don't want to say that fashion ever had anything humble about itself. But if there ever was anything humble in fashion, I think we lost it. There's just no humility anymore. And whoever tries to sell you this angelic vision of like walking around as an angel as something humble. Oh, girl. No, don't get fooled. Don't get fooled. Well, that's that. I, I'll cut it here. To each their own, my dears. You be the judge. Let me get some of your comments. A goofy mess says, Jesus! Where is the comment? At the bottom, bottom, I think. Yeah, a goofy mess... And then we also have Rockstar says zombie apocalypse with an Oompa Loompa emoji that is not visible in this chat. <laughs> Showing us lost and searching, says Sarah. Um, oh, yeah. Undomiel 2020 says neither is money a guarantee for good taste. No, never was. But we know that. I mean, I think... I think even people with money know that. Sometimes they just don't care about the good taste. They just want to show that they have the money. So that's more important than the taste. Um, <laughs> Sarah says, Goblet of Fire. Yeah. Um, Jared says, I feel depressed after watching that. Yeah, it was quite depressing. And not in a good way. You know, sometimes you, you feel your oats and you kind of maybe become sad and you have that depressive vibe but you want to linger in it it's kind of a good i call it a not that depression is ever good but feeling that melancholy sometimes is a good feeling but here no this was not at all productive melancholy for me tyler says louis has consistently dropped the ball for me for a long time now yeah it's just not it right um Coco Kitty CC says, that's pretty cool. They should do that more often. Um, oh, bringing out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Coco Kitty meant, meant this in the context of that's cool to bring out all the workers at the end of the show. They should do that more often. A dot says, everything about this collection and setup is chaotic. There it is. The white button, the white. The, yeah, everything about this collection and setup is chaotic um, then uh, which one else do we have here says Phoenix says this was one of those fashion shows that shouldn't have been hip hop meets bad style no bueno uh, Tyler says honestly it felt like a collection made for bad rappers and Asian billionaire children <laughs> that's a good one thank you for becoming a member Cheryl Madeline said, oh no, that was a different one. Hold on. Okay. Woo, child, there's a lot of these. Um, well, let me, let me, ah, uh, uh, Jesus says, LMAO, the wedding dress, I can't. Why does it look so goofy? Yeah, it's because it just isn't well executed. 
Oh, MC, who uh, loves Louis usually, MC says, Hello, I hated this LV show. So distracting and teetering on obnoxious. And this is one, you know, one of our Fashion Bunker family members here who usually really loves uh, Louis. Uh, Sarah says, Turbulent and disconnected modernity. Yeah. Um, Ryan von Ryan Vegentech looks like drunk teens having the bars, uh, leaving the bars at 3 a.m., face planting as they try to walk across the road to buy a kebab. Let's just leave it at that. Let me roll them the final credits while I read some more of these uh, comments. Um, if you become a member or a patron or you know, super chatter or um, donator to the fashion bunker. Your name is listed on the main videos at the end uh, in the final credits. Just like every good Halloween, Halloween, I love Halloween, Hollywood movie, you get your credits as the co-producers of the Fashion Bunker. Um, Jesus says, a goofy mess. May Virgil rest in peace, though. Ryan says, they should be booing each other, not cheering each other. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Yeah, I read that one. Uh, so let me scroll up to the other comments. Okay, so here. That will make their billionaire and millionaire clientele want their things even more, LOL. Yeah, that uh, that abstraction and that kind of money thing, right? Um, See, Lala says, I need the little white duffel bag. I need it. Oh, we got... Yeah, that, I mean, there are some interesting bags, you could say. Right? And also, if you like colors, you like that key ball with all the checkered thing, which we've seen in the past already. If you like that kind of stuff, why not? It's hip-hop futuristic meets apocalyptic, but I do like the purple satchel, says Phoenix. Ryan says, who let that drunk guy wobble about? Yes, but no, says vertigo inducing. Camera shots making me feel dizzy. Busy Lizzie says, just got here. What am I seeing here? A little Louis Vuitton show, honey. I know, it's a mess, right? <laughs> oh, I really love the paint can bag, somebody says. And then we got... Fair wages should be for all workers. It's not fair to pay so low and charge so much, says Phoenix. Oh no, he fell. Is he okay? I thought we read that one during the show. Anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Uh, goodbye, Virgil. Thank you so much for uh, being a designer and may you rest in peace. Until next time, guys, never forget to never give up on love. See you all soon. Take care. Bye.